My name is Okunobi Michael Olajide, and we are to continue with GPH 301, which is Electrical Method of Geophysical Investigation. This electrical method is divided into the self potential method, the resistivity method, the induced polarization method, as well as the electromagnetic method. We have treated the self potential method and we have had our assessment. So, also have we done in the resistivity method. And today, we are moving to the induced polarization method. The course outline for the induced polarization method is as presented from preambles down to the application. And the textbooks that will help you and guide you through this course are also presented on this slide. The induced polarization method is actually this method that depends on the establishment or the detection of double layer of charges at an interface between an electrolyte and a metallic ion or between an electrolyte and a clay mineral when current is made to pass through this interface. And as a result of that, is a current induced method. We will only be able to establish this double layer of charges or to detect this double layer of charges when current passes through the interface between an electrolyte and a clay mineral or a metallic ion. This induced polarization method is essentially divided into two. The force being the membrane polarization method, while the second is an electro polarization method. Now let us discuss the membrane polarization method. The membrane polarization method is also called the electrolytic, the normal effect, the background effect polarization, as you can see on the screen. These are observed in clay or shale bearing rocks where they occur in disseminated form in certain proportion. When a rock has clay mineral disseminated in certain proportion, then such rock will manifest induced polarization. Also, when metallic iron are present with the clay mineral, in the rock, we will still have membrane polarization. And the main cause of this membrane polarization is the differential mobility of ions that are present in fluids, which are in turn present in rock. If the fluid in rock has calcium ion, chloride ion, sodium ion, and so on and so forth, hydrogen chloride, just name them. So far that the movement of these ions are different, they move in um, different speed and all of those things, then membrane polarization will manifest. The second Polarization is the electrode polarization. And this polarization occurs when we have metallic iron present in disseminated form in rocks. That is when we have electrode polarization. And in electrode polarization, as unlike the membrane polarization, where electronic conduction, where electric rather conduction is strictly electrolytic or ionic. In electrode polarization, electric conduction is both electrolytic and electronic. It is electrolytic when electric moves through the electrolyte 
and it becomes electronic when the current moves through the metal ion. And there is this transition from electrolytic conduction to electronic conduction when current crosses the interface that is between the electrolyte and the metallic ion. And this is a significant difference between the membrane polarization as well as the electrode polarization. Another difference between membrane polarization and electro, electrode polarization is as displayed on the screen. Here we have electrode polarization and here we have membrane polarization. We can see that the chargeability for electrode polarization are much higher than the chargeability for membrane polarization. Hence, the membrane is such need. It's as a result of the difference in the magnitude of the chargeability. Now, we have discussed two basic differences between membrane polarization as well as electron polarization. And you must note these differences. Now, let us briefly talk about the origin of membrane polarization. Now, this origin can best be explained when we consider current flowing through a clay sandstone or a shale bearing rock. When we say a clay sandstone, we mean that we have clay mineral disseminated within the sandstone rock. Now, what we have is a poor part within the rock. And at the wall of the poor part, we have clay mineral. And I know that from your glide 101, you have all learned that clay mineral has negative charges surrounding it. And these are the negative charges surrounding the clay mineral. Now, we will consider a scenario when no current has been injected into the rock. That is, when no current has been injected into the salt surface. Now, we have established that the clay minerals have negatively charged interface. When the current is applied, positive ions from the electrolyte will be attracted by the clay mineral and then they will migrate. And here are the positive charges that are attracted by this clay mineral and are made at that position. The same thing is happening here, the clay mineral, all of them being there. Now, we will see that in this vicinity, in this vicinity of the clay mineral, we have double layer of charges. This being the first layer, and then this the second layer, and then we have this double layer of cation charges. Now, these charges that are closest to the clay mineral are called the fixed layer, while those that are far away, all of these, are the diffused layer. So we have this, the first layer being the fixed layer, while those that are far away are the diffused layer. Now, the T 
thickness of this layer formed has been defined by grammar 1947 by this equation D being the thickness while this other parameter are as defined on this slide. Now, the larger the value of D, the greater is the probability that the raw pore part will be partially or totally blocked and the higher the IP effect. At this point, we will be rounding off and then we will continue from this point in our next